So it's important to know like when you're when you're looking at a rotator cuff, when you're potentially doing an evaluation, you're gonna just look first and then you can palpate to see where the pain points are, your bony promises, your joints, um, if it's painful, and then you're gonna go into some of the tests. Um, now, the most important thing when it comes to the tests is that you just understand the why of why you're doing a test, right? So, um, in the videos I go over the impingement signs um, so when it's a rotator cuff, you're going to look for impingement signs. Um, and there's, there's two different types of tests. And then you're going to, um, you can do the Job's test or the empty can, right? That's looking for, you're looking for impingements or you're looking for tears. Then there's the belly press test. Um, and then you are going to look for the lag signs. So in this particular chapter, when they talk about the lag sign, they're talking about you're gonna place someone in external rotation, and if they can't um, hold that external rotation, that it's most likely an infraspinatus tendon tear if there's a certain amount of lag. The other lag um, that they talk about is a horn blower's lag. And the horn blower's lag is this, where they're going to be an abduction and you, you're trying to get them to go into and hold that, go into external rotation in that abduction uh, position. It's horn blowers um, test. And if they can't do that, that's more indicative of a teres minor tear. So I forgot what chapter that was. It was in the rotator cuff chapter. But when you read there are certain things that should kind of like stand out to you and it's things like that. I think that's important because on the test they could, they could ask you certain questions like what tests would be best <laughs> if you suspected a tear here? And then they're gonna give you three different tests or four different tests, you can rule two out, but what if one of them was like these lag tests? but one is going to be more indicative of a infraspinatus tear, which is the external rotation one, or horn blowers, which is more of a teres minor. That came straight from the book. So when you're, when you're reading, that's, that's what kind of jumps out at me, and how if I think through like what's important, how they're gonna ask me, it's, that's how you know, you're gonna somehow be able to apply it, you know? Um, does that make sense? So, um, so when you when you understand like, oh, okay, this this um, this muscle helps with external rotation. Which test is going to test external rotation? So then, when you read the test questions, it's going to come down to okay, well, that test is going to test for external rotation. I know these two muscles do external rotation. The infraspinatus and the teres minor do ex external rotation, whereas the subscap I know does internal rotation. So if that's one of the questions, and the question is all about external rotation, then subscap is out, <laughs> right? So that's how you you know you kind of think through. I mean, it's important. Like over time, you'll develop the skills, um, and you'll develop the order in which you're going to do things clinic-wise. But for the test too, it's important to you know. Kind of think about um, how they would apply it for you, but this is very, this is very, very clinical. You know, um, it's just it's hard when if you've seen it in other places. That's why I try when I do this kind of class, I, I try to pull straight from the book versus like, oh, I saw this is the way the doctors do it, <laughs> you know? and then I'm gonna screw you guys up. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, oh, the doctor does it this way, or, you know, he, you know, yeah, I want you to really clearly understand why they do what they do, and I think that's going to be, like, the biggest thing when it comes to, like, 